Get ready for an in-depth look at roulette systems being tested to their extremities, as this series produces results that will help you decide which bets are best for you. While we won't be watching live spins or chasing big wins, we will be testing as many roulette systems as possible through a sophisticated simulator and showing you the results as they occur. The problem with so many systems and variations of systems out there is it can be difficult to figure out which ones are best for you, so using this data-driven approach, we will uncover which roulette systems are better than others for various reasons. All roulette systems will win for a bit, and they are easy enough to demonstrate over a small number of spins or short amount of playing time. However, you can find a bad system that does well on your first few sessions, increase your stakes and get whacked. Or you might find a great system, suffer a small loss and bin it without further thought. In this ongoing series, we will be testing roulette systems with up to 40,000 spins in just a few minutes without the need to watch hours of game footage. In a controlled environment like this, we can guarantee the spins are not being manipulated and each system will be tested with exactly the same spins, offering the most insightful and eye-opening comparisons. Today's video is more about introducing the format for the series, so we're going to look at results from some simple flat bets and look at the infamous Martingale even money betting system in a number of ways to give us a starting point. In the coming weeks and months, we will be looking at all types of clockwork systems, dynamic systems and random systems to see if any of them give us an advantage over the house edge. So, let's dive straight in. First up is a simple flat bet that anyone watching the Do Casinos Cheat series will be familiar with, where we simply place one chip on the corner between 11 and 15. The spins we will be using have been RNG or random number generated as 40 sessions of a thousand spins. You can download a copy of these spins from our website if you wish to conduct your own tests. You might wonder how realistic these spins are going to be, but those who have watched series one of Do Casinos Cheat have seen us demonstrate there are countless ways of checking if the random spins are fair by the predictable patterns or measurements you can produce from random data. Yes, you heard that right. Much to the disgust of the gambler's fallacy advocates, there are completely predictable patterns and events that occur in roulette spins. Probability is a very accurate force of nature and trumps the fallacy every time. The format for this series will be for us to explain what type of bet we will be simulating and give a short demonstration of how it works by manually playing through a few spins. Obviously, a flat bet on a single corner is about as simple as it can get. We have set the system to simulate starting with £100, and as this isn't a dynamic system, we do not need to look at any previous spin data so we can set the system to start with a bet. You can see it has placed the equivalent of a pound corner bet by placing 25 pence of value on each pocket. You can see the total bet value down here. Our highest balance was of course the £100 we set it to start with, and our balance is showing as 99 because the first bet is already on. If we take a look at the actual spins, the roulette simulator is about to play through. We can see this bet will get its first win on spin 4, and again on spin 6. So let's just manually move through the spins to check everything is in order. We can see after spending £4 on the first 4 spins, we then won £9. So our highest balance reached 105, but then the system immediately placed the next bet, so our real balance is 104, with a pound already placed for the next spin. Let's move forward. No win, of course. Then a win on the sixth spin, so we have spent six, made 18, and also placed another chip, so the balance of 111 is correct. I trust that makes sense, but don't worry if it doesn't. It's the end results we are really interested in. Obviously, we don't want to sit here and play through all the spins manually, so as soon as we are confident the simulator is placing bets as expected, we can let it run automatically. In this case, it will play the full 1,000 spins for each of the 40 sessions and produce the results here. We are actually going to set the start balance to zero while running the full test as it's easier to see what stake you would need, although this will make more sense when we get onto progressive systems. We are going to set a high stop loss and profit target as we do not want them to interfere with this test. Right, let's run it. We can speed it up a bit for the video. Otherwise, it does take a while to process, especially when the bets become more complex. We are going to pause at half a dozen sessions so we can explain what is going on and double check the system is working as expected.
OK, we have six sessions on the board. The first column is obviously the session identifier. Then we have the number of spins played. As this first demonstration is a flat bet, we have set the system to play all available spins. However, in future demonstrations, the spin count may vary per session if we are simulating a system with a fixed profit target or stop loss. The profit column, of course, shows how that session ended, and the per hour column is based upon 80 spins per hour unless we indicate otherwise. The CB or current balance column appears to be a repeat of the profit column, but this shows your actual balance if a session ends with a bet still in play. For example, if the CBV or current bet value column had a value of 50, and your profit column was showing 200, then your current balance would actually only be 150. The LB slash cap column is showing the lowest balance or capital required for this session. We purposely set the start balance to zero, so this column effectively shows how much stake you would have needed to play a particular session. The HB or highest balance column is not always an indicator of profit. You can see on the first session, if we started with a zero balance, then at some point in the session, it reached £25 profit, although it ended with a 208 loss. Interestingly so far, these tiny flat bets have all gone into profit at some point. The bets column shows the number of bets placed. In this particular example, unless you win on the last spin, then the number of bets placed will be one higher than the number of bets you won. Let's see how true this is. So, for the first session, we can assume we won 88 bets with a £9 return that would give us a total return of 792. We would have spent £1,000 on bets, so our profit would be negative 208. So that's right. Look at session 5. Its highest balance is also its profit, so that session must have ended with a win, so all bets placed won. With 123 bets returning £9, that's a total of 1,107. Take off the 1,000 spent on bets leaves you 107 in profit. The BPH, or bets per hour column, is also based on 80 spins per hour, unless stated otherwise. It's this kind of information that will allow us to make insightful comparisons between different types of bets. Let's leave the system running while we calculate our expectation for this particular bet trial. We are betting on four pockets. Four divided by 37 total pockets gives us a win rate of just under 11%. So, we can expect to win just over 4,300 times in 40,000 spins. We can expect a return of almost £39,000, but of course we would be spending 40000 on bets. Because roulette is a negative expectation game, we can expect to lose over £1,000 playing this simple flat bet. Obviously, we are not trying to demonstrate a worthy betting system here. We are just establishing a baseline for the series and seeing if our 40,000 spins live up to calculable expectations. Now the simulator has finished the trials, let's convert the results to Excel and add some totals. You can see the combined session actually lost 1246, which is a difference of 162. You can see that equates to 18 wins behind expectation, which is less than half a percent difference. We would class that as an accurate prediction and a good indicator that our random number generated spins are realistic. The information provided at the end of the trial will become more useful when we start exploring and comparing proper roulette systems. Now that example was only covering four pockets, so the system was only averaging around nine bets per hour. Let's quickly run another flat system so we can get a comparison and of course have another look at the accuracy of our RNG spins. This time we're going to flat bet on red. With 18 pockets in play, we're going to get a lot more wins than our four pocket bet. So let's see if bigger is better. We are sticking with 25 pence per pocket to match the last example, so this time each spin would cost £4.50. You can see straight away there are a lot more bets per hour, but despite more wins, it doesn't look like we are doing very well with the profits. Now what do you think? We know an 18 pocket or even money bet should win just under 50% of the time. So, will this bet do better than the 4 pocket bet? In 40,000 spins we can expect to win almost 19,500 times. As we are using the equivalent of a 25 pence chip per pocket, the return will also be £9 or chips, dollars, etc. That equates to over 175,000. Not bad, huh? But before we get carried away, the bets also cost a lot more. So we can expect a bigger bet with more wins. We'll actually lose more money. As you can see from the profit total, this flat bet actually lost 5,400. So this bet also fell behind expectation. With 56 missing wins, it might appear to have done even worse than the four-pocket bet. But if we compare them side by side, the numbers tell a different story. 
The four-pocket bet was almost half a percent behind expectation with 18 missing wins. The 18-pocket red bet had 56 missing wins, but was nearer to its expectation at around a quarter of a percent behind expectation. So the larger bet, as you might expect, was actually closer to its expectation in terms of accuracy of its predicted number of wins, but despite winning over 15,000 times more than the smaller bet, it actually lost a lot more money. So, if red is slightly behind expectation, then we can assume black will be ahead of its expectation, unless zero has had excessive wins. Let's look at an overview of the 40,000 spins we are going to be using in this series. We can see zero is just behind its expectation for this number of spins, so black must be ahead of expectation. Let's run the test again flat betting on black. So black gets off to a reasonable start. We know red had missing wins, and we just looked at green zero, which was also behind expectation over the 40,000 spins, so that means black must end up ahead of expectation. So, are we likely to see a profit here? The profit column doesn't seem to be doing too well, does it? But if we know red was behind, green was practically on target with only two wins missing, so why isn't black showing a strong profit here? Of course, the reason is the house edge. By flat betting on every spin, we are literally just eroding our balance over time. The house edge on a European wheel is about 2.7% and about 526 on the American version, so you can imagine how much worse this would be looking if we were to simulate this with 38 pockets. The overall losses would be almost double. Even though black was ahead of expectation by £585, we can see it still had a significant actual loss. And of course, the expected loss for the American wheel, as you can see, is significantly higher. Let's complete this set of tests by running a flat bet on green zero. Again, we will place a 25 pence chip, so we will still get a return of £9 on a win. So far, it appears playing a flat bet on every spin is never going to work as the house edge simply erodes your balance. But there are profitable ways to play flat bets using a get-in, get-out approach. The question is, are we better to cover a large number of pockets such as an even money 18 pocket set, or perhaps two dozens or nine streets or five lines, or should we be thinking about covering a much smaller number of pockets? You can probably already see with a single pocket bet, the wins and losses in the profit column are looking far more balanced than the larger bet results. The bets per hour are through the floorboards averaging around two bets per hour, but of course betting on a single pocket, we are only expecting to win once every 37 spins. So how did we do? We already knew we were going to be two wins behind expectation, so the results are no surprise. Let's bring back all the results so we can see what happened. The single pocket bet on zero actually had the most session wins. You might not think of a continuous flat bet as a roulette system. However, it's easy to explain the method, and anyone can replicate the results. The disadvantage of a continuous flat bet, of course, is it's so simple it cannot beat the house edge, or can it? Let's turn the chart around. We have actual results from a single pocket, a four pocket, and two 18 pocket bets. Our test results were all very close to their calculable expectations, so let's plot the actual expectations on a bigger chart with space for all the possible bet sizes. We can see there is a possible trend line here, so the bigger the bet size, the more you lose. So it seems bigger is definitely not better, however we have only looked at bets with less than 50% coverage. There are many other popular roulette channels playing two dozens, or nine streets, or five lines or five double streets, as All on Black calls it, and many other high coverage configurations. These other channels clearly think bigger is better. Does the losing trend line change when you get beyond 50% coverage? As the wins become more frequent, do the losses reduce and head back towards profit? Well, we have run out of time for today, and we didn't even get around to looking at the Martingale system like we said we would earlier. We're going to try and keep these videos short in order to make them more frequent so we will look at the Martingale system and answer that last question in episode 2 next week. As always, we welcome your comments, likes and subscriptions. Please come back next week, or turn your notify settings on if you want to watch the next episode as soon as it's released. Thanks for watching and see you next time.